Well, let's talk about what what you mean when you say reversal, like reversal, remission. Like, are you, Mm. is it possible to cure type two diabetes? Like, what do you actually mean? Okay, great question. Uh, I think this is actually, it can be kind of controversial to even talk about this because it means different things to different people. So when we refer to reversing, we, we talk about reversing insulin resistance because it's the underlying cause of prediabetes and type wow. 2 diabetes. And it's the thing that makes your blood glucose wonky. Um, and um, when it comes to reversing type 2 diabetes as an example, what you want to do is drop your A1C value. Your A1C is basically like a, a three-month an indicator that tells you what your blood glucose stability has been over the course of three months. And so the, the standard is to get your blood, your, your A1C to less than a 5.7%. Okay, so between 5.7 and 6.4 is considered pre-diabetes, and then 6.5 and beyond is considered type two. Mm-hmm. So let's say you start out at a 7.0, and then you drop that from a seven to a six, from a six to a 5.5, boom, you're at a 5.5. Technically you're in the green zone, you're in the non-diabetic range, cool, let's stay there. In addition to that, we also wanna see a low fasting blood glucose, and a low fasting insulin. So low fasting blood glucose means less than 100 milligrams per deciliter, and low fasting insulin means less than five, okay? So if you can achieve all three of those, then technically speaking, you're in the safe zone. But what we wanna see is that you maintain that, not only do you just get it today, mm-hmm. I want you to maintain that for a year, right? I want you to prove to me that your lifestyle is dialed in enough that you can maintain all of those biomarkers for a year. Now. Those are the, those two markers, the fasting insulin and fasting glucose, are, are indicators of what your fasting metabolism is doing. And that's important, no question. But it's also important to make sure that your glucose challenged metabolism is also functioning well. And the glucose challenged metabolism effectively refers to what happens after you eat a carbohydrate rich meal, right? So if you were to go eat a carbohydrate rich meal, I also want to make, make sure that your fat, your post-meal insulin is not high and that your post-meal blood glucose is also not high, right? Now, in the world of ketogenic diets, what we are talking about earlier, a lot of the research focuses on what's happening in the fasting state because, again, you lose weight, you drop your fasting glucose, you drop your fasting insulin, you drop your A1C, everything looks good. But they're using that as a, a collection of information to say, good job, you've reversed type 2 diabetes but they're not testing the glucose challenge state. Mm-hmm. And if you're not testing the glucose challenge state, then you're missing an entire That's component. the real marker of just how insulin resistant you are or are not. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why what we like to say is let's get the biomarkers set in the, in the fasting state and let's get them set in the, in the glucose challenge state. Mm-hmm. And if you can do both of those and you can maintain that over the course of time, give me a full year, then we can say that you've reversed type two diabetes mm-hmm. altogether. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't think the exact words matter. Is it reversal? Is it cure? Is it remission? It's what's happening in real people's lives. People who come to us with a high A1C, they're taking diabetes medications, they have fatty liver disease, they have no energy. Okay, so we get them, they don't need medication anymore. I mean, I just pulled up the story, Tammy, because she's one of my uh, favorite testimonials. She actually lives here in Los Angeles. I got to meet her at the farmer's market. When she joined our program, her A1C was 7.2%. And she was using metformin. So that's a common diabetes medication. That's a high A1C medicated. Now she follows our program. She gets to eat all the carbohydrate rich food she wants, unlimited amounts. She reduces her A1C to 5.3% unmedicated. Mm, So totally off metformin. Yeah. So at that point, I don't care what you want to call that. Reversal, it doesn't matter. She's she's non diabetic. She's removed the cause of the problem. And now she's able to metabolize glucose. But most importantly, she also had insulin data. So when she was living with type 2 diabetes, had the elevated A1C, still using metformin, her fasting insulin was 17.4. This is very high. Now she starts eating our diet, doesn't need the medication anymore, has lost weight. Her fasting insulin is 5.2. That's healthy. That's where it's supposed to be. That's crazy. Is there ever a situation where somebody's Type two diabetes is so progress like the extreme examples of this being unchecked for a very long time. Somebody who's very overweight, like the person who's going to get you know their foot amputated or whatever. Where it's just even even to like put them on this program, like it's too late. Or or do you always see improvement? 
It's never too late to improve your overall health. Yeah. I mean, so, but this is a really important topic. We're actually quite passionate about it. And we wrote about this in the book. There is a situation where you can become an insulin dependent type two. That's actually real. Mm. So if you have gone through that situation where Cyrus was talking about all the insulin being produced and knocking on the door, it's possible that your beta cells have become exhausted and you literally aren't able to produce enough insulin to manage your blood glucose level without exogenous insulin. So you're more like a type one mm. without the autoimmunity, right. without the antibodies. And that's okay. So we talk about C-peptide testing. You can go and get a test done. You can figure out and establish how well are your beta cells working? How much insulin are you producing? And then we can gauge your goals. Yeah, it's cool. And so, yeah, you, you, you at that point, Okay, for, of course, they're more like Cyrus and I. They're more like a type one. There's still no reason not to get, gain some more energy to reduce your risk of heart disease, which is the number one killer of people mm -hmm. living with all forms of diabetes. Mm -hmm. To reduce your risk of fatty liver disease, chronic kidney disease, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, erectile dysfunction, depression, you name it. You want to maximize your insulin sensitivity. 